Hello, and thank you for buying the metal detector kit from 4-Bit Industries. These video instructions will show you how to install the various components. First, let's take them out and take an inventory. First, we have a PCB. You should have two sets of four resistors a glass-bodied diode. There are two packages that look similar, two uh, TO92s. Uh, one is a FET and one is a voltage regulator. And you can see that we've put a green stripe on the FET so that you can tell it apart. You should have a little foam piece with a socket, a chip, and a switch on it, an LED, a ceramic capacitor, an electrolytic capacitor, a brown foil capacitor, and two white foil capacitors as well. So we're going to start with the resistors. So let's move the rest of these out of the way. Oh. Also, a battery holder. So there are two values of resistor, and uh, we've included uh, different body colors in the kit so that you can help tell them apart. Uh, these tan ones are the 220 ohm resistors. And if you look carefully at the PCB, you will see we have written 220R into the four places where they are supposed to be installed. The other uh, resistors, they have very uh, hard to see color codes, but they are the 100Ks and they go into the four positions marked 100K. Now I like to clip the uh, resistors away from the tape. You can just pull them out if you prefer. But I'm going to start with just one of these resistors. We're going to bend the leads down. We're going to find the first spot I'm starting with. Let's start with R1 that's in the top right. We just stick the two leads through the two holes. We stick it in from the front side of the metal detector. And then you can bend the leads so that they flare out just a little bit. You don't have to bend them flat, but if you bend them so that they uh, hold the resistor in place for soldering, that'll make your work much easier. Now, this is sort of an irregularly shaped PCB, but if you have a helping hands tool to hold this for you while you're soldering, that's fine. If you don't, and you have a heat resistant surface to tape it down to, you can just tape this down for soldering. Now to solder this, we're going to clean our iron, put a little bit of solder on the tip, just to act as a heat bridge. We're gonna get this iron in here so it's touching both the pad and the lead at the same time. We're going to flow some solder in there, remove the solder, remove the iron. We'll do that for the other one. And now we've soldered our first resistor. Now some instructions will say to trim the leads before soldering, but I find for people who are beginning in soldering, it's really a good idea to trim the leads afterwards so you don't trim them too small. But you'll get a feel for how much lead you need to solder. Now, check your solder joint. Make sure that the pad is completely covered with solder, that it ramps up to the lead so that the lead is connected to the pad on all sides. One good way to check your soldering is to look at the top side. Did a little bit of solder flow up through the hole and onto the top of the pad? Well, it did, which means that I got that pad hot enough uh, for the solder to really flow, and that's a good sign when you're soldering. Now for the next three resistors, if you're feeling confident, you can go ahead and bend the leads of all three of them and stick them into the uh, three remaining positions. That would be R4, 
R7 and R8, I believe. The uh, white writing on the top is referred to as silk screening. And the outline of the component on the board is called the footprint. And all the footprints are numbered. And we go the extra step of uh, writing the component values onto the board to make things a little bit easier for you. So I've stuck all three resistors in and bent their leads out. I'm just going to solder them one after another. And then we'll move on to the 100K resistors. <laughs> You saw that resistor wiggle a little bit as I was taking the iron off. I'm just going to reflow that joint to make sure it's a good joint. And now we'll trim the leads. Alrighty, so we've got our four 220-ohm resistors in place. Now we'll move on to the 100K resistors. Alrighty. Alrighty, so we've got all our resistors installed now and the leads are trimmed. Let's move on to the glass bodied diode. Now, diodes you have to be careful with because they are polarized. There is a right way and wrong way to install them. So looking at the glass body diode, you'll notice there is a black stripe at one end. Looking at where this diode is installed, D2, you will see a white stripe on the footprint. We want to install the diode so that the black stripe and the stripe on the footprint are at the same end. 
So go ahead and bend the leads down just like you did for the resistors and install that into the two holes making sure after you have it in there that the black stripe is at the same end as the white stripe stripe on the silk screen and then we'll solder that down just as we did the resistors Okay, now it's time to move on to a very different piece. We're going to solder the chip socket into place. Don't put the chip in it yet, we'll put that in at the very end. Now, chip sockets also should be installed the correct way around. If you look at the chip socket, you'll notice a little divot in one side, a little notch that's been cut into it. Looking at the footprint on the board, we see that notch is printed in the silk screening. So we want to install the socket so that the notch on the socket is right over the notch in the silk screen. Now, we can't really bend the leads to hold it in place. You can try uh, if you like, but most find that it's easier, particularly beginning solderers find that it's easier to just tape it down with a piece of blue tape, or really any tape you have, as long as you can get it off again. So when soldering a socket into place, I recommend soldering just the first pin to start. So there we've soldered one pin, and now I'm going to inspect my socket, make sure it's still flat against the board, that it's still positioned the way I want it to be. If it's not, I can heat that one joint and push it into position carefully so I don't burn my fingers. But this one seems to be in a pretty good position, so I'm going to go ahead and solder the other seven pins. Pins moving around on me. Alrighty, that looks pretty good. Alright, next we're going to take another piece out of the foam. We're going to take the slide switch. The slide switch goes right here with the slide pointing downwards towards on and off. You can again tape this in place for soldering. You may find that it holds itself in there well enough anyways. Now when we solder this, I'm going to start with the center pin and you can check to make sure it's still in place. Mine is still in place. Check that before soldering the other two. And then you're going to want to solder the legs in for stability. Really get that iron on the pad, on the leg, making good contact. Blow a little solder in there on that side so that you can get it going. Blow most of the solder from the opposite side and it should fill in the hole. There we go, that's a nice solid connection. All right, now we're going to move on to some of the capacitors. The easiest one to install is the ceramic capacitor. It is not polarized. It goes into position C5 right here by the chip socket. We can just stick it all the way in. The body of the resistor will not go all the way against the board because of the bent leads. But if we just bend them out a little bit like that, it'll stay in place for soldering.
Next, let's do the two uh, white metal film capacitors. Um, so these go into C2 and C3. You should be able to just barely read on the top, two in two, which matches the value written on the silk screening. Now these do have just enough of a lead that you should be able to bend them into place, but if you want to tape them, you can do that as well. Not essential that these go in straight, but the straighter they are, the better they'll look. Alrighty. So one capacitor goes way up here near the search coil, and that is this other film capacitor. I think this is a polyester capacitor. And that goes in there like that. If, um, if you don't like the kinked leads, you know, you can cut them a little higher and push it down onto the board. It's not going to hurt it at all. But I'm going to... I'm going to install this, I guess, the way it's intended. I'm going to bend it down a little bit. Quite a bit of solder goes on those. That looks fine. Alrighty. We're down to just a few components, but it is essential that we install these components correctly. Next we're going to do the LED. Now LEDs are polarized the way all diodes are, and you can see how you determine which side of the LED is which the leads are different lengths. See that? Not only are the leads different lengths, but if you feel carefully, most people can feel it. Um, some people have trouble finding it, but there's a little lip on the edge of the LED, and there's a flat spot on one side, and you can kind of see the flat spot there. So the flat spot is on the same side as the short leg. The short leg goes through the square hole, the long leg, goes through the round hole, or rather the round pad. So on the board you can see there is a square pad and a round pad. You want to install it this way so that the long lead goes through the round pad, the short lead goes through the square pad, and that puts the flat spot on the rim right where there is a flat spot in the silk screening which is on the side with the square pad. You can see the little flat spot is drawn right there. So double check that you have the LED inserted the right way round. Bend the leads out like you did for the resistors and capacitors and solder that into place. Alright, the electrolytic capacitor. All electrolytic capacitors have their polarity written on them. In this case, we find a gold stripe with a negative side on it. That's the negative side of the capacitor. And the negative side matches the shaded half of the electrolytic capacitor footprint over here at C4. So we want to stick the capacitor in 
so that the side marked negative matches the shaded area. You'll notice on the silk screening on your board there's a tiny little plus on the other side of the capacitor. That should sit all the way down and you can bend the leads out for soldering. Alrighty, there we go. Alrighty. So now we're down to the FET and the regulator. And as I said, you can tell which is which because we put a green stripe on the FET. But what if you already cut them away from the paper and you've lost track of which is which? Well, if you look very, very closely, you should see the numbers 2, an N, and then 7,000 written on the FET. That is a 2N7000 FET. And so you may need a uh, magnifying glass or a microscope to see that, but it is written on there, and we have written 2N7000 in the place where this component is inserted, which is Q1. So I'm going to insert all three legs. You can bend the outer two legs to hold it into place. The component will not sit flat against the board. You can see it sits up on its legs. That's what it's designed to do. And so we can go ahead and solder that in three places. I'm not sure that first one really adhered to the pad. Okay, good. Those legs are a little bit long, so you will want to trim them. Be very careful with the pieces that come off though. Since they are small, they can stick to the board. And then the one without the stripe is the voltage regulator. We've marked that 78L05. If you do look at the numbers in there, eventually you will find 78L05 written in it. It's um, got a bunch of other letters and numbers on there also, though. And we can install that the same way. These packages do have to be installed facing the correct direction. It's not hard to tell where the correct direction is. In fact, I thought it was so obvious I didn't mention it. But you can see they have a sort of half moon shape, a rounded back and a flat front with the text on it. And that matches the footprint that's drawn on the board. All right, two final components. We have second to last component to install, but the last one to uh, solder into place is the battery holder. The battery holder is a little different in that it installs from the rear. So we're going to insert it from the rear and solder it at the front. Now these holes on the board are for number two screws. If you have some number two screws, you can use it to hold this in place for soldering. If not, you can just put a big piece of tape around it. I find that the battery holder does hold to the project well enough just with solder, but if you want added stability, you can add those screws. If there were any screws in your kit, Consider them an added bonus gift from 4-Bit Industries. <laughs> Again, you want to make sure you're getting both the, hat, the pad and the lead hot. And you'll know you've gotten them both hot when you're able to fill 
that hole with solder. It takes a good bit of solder to hold this into place. But in the end, it should look roughly like that. And I will go ahead and trim those little leads. It's a little hard to do, but... Yeah, there we go. The last component does not have to be soldered in, but your metal detector will not work without it. And that is the chip that is in the foam pad. Now, <clears throat> looking at the chip, it does have a right way round. You'll notice this chip has a little dot. Your chip might have a notch in the end. It might have a notch and a little dot. But whether it has a notch or a dot, that end is the end where pin number one is found. And that needs to go into the socket so that the dot or the notch is in the same direction as the notch on the socket. Now the legs on a chip when they arrive are usually splayed out a little bit. They're not pointing straight up and, and down. And so the way I like to straighten them out is to roll the chip very gently against the table so that I straighten all four pins at once. And we'll do that to both sides. And when it looks like the pins are straight up and down, that looks pretty good. Then we will again locate that dot. Make sure it's pointed in the right direction, which in our case is the left direction. And we'll insert that. So you can see the little dot there is at the end with the notch. Okay, we've soldered our metal detector and it's time to give it a try. So we'll insert a 9 volt battery, make sure it clips in, should be nice and secure. The battery holder forms part of the handle. You can switch it on and within a second it will um, <clears throat> calibrate itself. So you can see the LED is blinking on and off, and that's, you know, it could be for a number of reasons. Uh, it's best to hold the metal detector away from all metal, and I can't really get away, too far away from metal here at the desk, but it's best to get it away from metal when you switch it on so it can calibrate without any metal near it. And then after that, if I take something like my phone, it should light solid when it's near something metal like my phone or the top of this um, uh, top of this isopropyl alcohol dispenser and that's it you've got yourself a working metal detector if the light ever seems to come on it won't shut off even though you're not near metal just hold it away from metal switch it off switch it back on to recalibrate it you should be fine this thing can also be set off by nearby Wi-Fi signals, um, but it's usually pretty good. Well, thank you for building a metal detector. I hope you have fun with it. I hope you learned a little something about soldering, uh, and I hope you have fun. Bye.